An integral aspect of Bleach that not a lot of people talk about are the poems Kubo writes throughout the chapters. One of the things I really enjoyed about the Thousand Year Blood War anime adaptation was that they featured some of the poems. It really showed me that they understood Kubo's style. Every volume of the manga has a poem often centered around the character featured on its respective cover. Along with having songs in mind accompanying them, the poems help flush out characters adding a bit more detail and creativity to a pretty restrictive format. The actual quality of his poetry is subjective and can vary depending on individual taste and interpretation, considering that often accompanies his artwork and is influenced by the themes and atmosphere of his manga. It's hard to take the poems at face value and extract all their value. As someone who's read and written a bit of poetry, I will say that it's obviously more simplistic and less refined than an established poet's work. Despite that, I appreciate the evocative and atmospheric nature of Kubo's poetic style and find it complementary to the visual elements of his manga. If anything, I don't want to contribute to the idea that Kubo is a lackluster writer, but more that when it comes to his poetry, it takes a little more work to understand his strengths. Before we take a look at some examples, I want to ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and if you have any anime or manga related things you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments below. Alright, back to the video. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of his poetry. Just keep in mind that when reading poetry in a different language, especially one like Japanese, it's basically impossible to understand and appreciate it for all it's worth. The official translations for some of these aren't very good, but there's a decent amount of fan translations that help better capture the work. Also, we won't be getting into it too much, but his chapter titles as well are interesting. I might talk about that in another video. Anyway, let's take a look at some examples. Volume 57 features the desperate Biatia on the cover. You can probably imagine what this volume includes. As Byakuya succumbs to Asnan's fear and is brutalized, you're left thinking that the fan favorite character is Winkiel Thom. Obviously, a controversial choice happens later on in the manga, but I don't think that takes away from the moment personally. In a vacuum, the poem fits perfectly, scattering twice without even blooming, like flames scatter, beautiful. Byakuya's battle represents more than just his personal defeat and signifies a significant change. Byakuya is the model Soul Reaper. He serves as a representation for the entire Gote 13. At this moment along him, all Soul Reapers have been defeated. The Gote 13 is a flyer who had reached full bloom. What comes next is only going to be decay and eventual destruction. Despite this, the Shinigami strength and their resolve will continue to persevere despite their circumstance. Thus, the light flames scatter beautiful part. This is one of my favorites, and I think it is a good illustration of some of the strength and meaning in even some of his simpler writings. Volume 25 or No Shaking Thrones poem reads, We all die as we are born. We always find the end before the beginning. If to live means to continually search for wisdom, we'll find the end waiting after our last lesson. Finally see the subtlety of the end and understand it completely is what it means to die. We cannot help ourselves from growing wiser. Those who are helpless to their search for knowledge are those who cannot transcend death. In the Bleach volume, the title refers to a chapter where Ichigo makes a promise to himself not to falter and let his inner hollow take over. The battle between Ichigo and his inner hollow represented as hollow Ichigo as a central theme. He is on the cover after all. Hollow Ichigo challenges Ichigo's beliefs and sense of self, pushing him to embrace his instincts and seek power. Through this conflict, Ichigo learns the importance of gaining wisdom and awareness in life. By accepting and understanding his inner desires, Ichigo becomes more confident and overcomes his fears. The battle with his inner hollow helps Ichigo grow and regain his self-assurance. You could go on and on as there are as many poems as there are volumes and all over the internet. You can find people taking the shots at interpreting them. Kubo's poetry within Bleach serves multiple purposes. It can provide insight into the character's thoughts and emotions, add depth to their motivations and actions, 
and create a sense of atmosphere and mood within the story. The poems often accompany important moments or pivotal scenes highlighting their significance and adding another layer of meaning. Some fans appreciate the poetic aspects, finding them evocative and thought-provoking. They may enjoy the lyrical language, symbolism, and metaphorical expressions employed by Kumo, which can enhance the overall reading experience. Taikubo's poetry is at the very least distinct with its unique style, as well as being accompanied by detailed illustrations and powerful storytelling that captivates and brings the stories to life. Anyway, what do you think of Kubo's poetry? Do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I made other videos on both Kubo's use of architecture and his character designs if you're interested. There's also a video on the defunct Bleach trading card game if that sort of thing interests you. If you're still here, thanks for watching. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe, and I'm going to leave you with a couple more of my favorite poems before the video wraps up. I'll also leave a link down below where you can access some translations to these. Credit to everyone involved with that. Also, Poems Bleach has pretty much all of them on their Twitter, so you could go check that out as well.